What's going on everybody? So today in this video, basically, I'm going to teach you the fundamentals of creating a project, creating a GitHub repo, and posting your source code from your Spigot plugin to GitHub, and some basic git bash commands to help you do that too. So without further ado, let's just get into it. What you want to do is you want to start your IntelliJ. You should be prompted with this screen. You want to click Create New Project. And then you want to click Next, Next. And then we'll name our project Example. And then just click Finish. Wait for the project to load. Now your project is, is here. Uh, it should be a blank project, nothing in it. Um, you want to make a package name. Mine, for example, will be me dot drift day dot uh, we'll say example, and then make a new Java class. Call it main capitalized, and then um, real quick before I add my libraries, I would prefer you guys do these methods too, just to get your memory down. And then public void on disable. Okay, so these are the two methods that would run when your plugin is either enabled on enable or disabled on disabled. Public means it can be accessed from anywhere. Void means it returns nothing. As if you are jumping into the void on Minecraft, you're jumping into literally nothing. Um. So this right here should be fine right now. Now I'll show you guys how to actually add the spigot, the spigot API, I guess you could say, into your project as a library. So you go to File, and then Project Structure, and then click Libraries, the plus sign right here, Java. And then, for instance, I'm going to scroll down to my test server, and then scroll down again to 1.88 jar, which is just 1.8.8 spigot. That's all that is. I just renamed it. And then you want to click Alt and Enter, which is the default, which is the default, uh, I guess you could say, key combination for importing on IntelliJ. So, for instance, we can run, we can do bucket dot get console sender dot send message. Uh, hi, this is my example. Now, without a doubt in my mind, this will work. It's in the on enable method. Um, so when the plugin starts up in your console, it will, it will print out this, and then it'll say it's been enabled. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to create a plugin.yml, which is required in any Spigot plugin. We will do name, example. Uh, we can do version. 1.0, we can do description. This is my example again. Uh, it does not have to be the same thing as this. It, 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 it can be whatever you want the description to be. Author, uh, drift day, and main. So main is very important. Main is required in every plugin.yml. So your plugin can be registered from the class that has the on enable method where everything in your entire plugin starts. So for instance, mine is me.driftday.example.main. So why is this M capitalized? It's because my class name is capitalized. If this were if my class name was lowercase, that would have to be lowercase. If this was, I don't know, um if this was a capital D, if I refractored this. Now I would have to I would have to change that to a capital D, but it also changes everything inside of your inside of your. I don't think package names can actually be capitalized, so I think we're good on that part. Um, so your main would be me dot drift day dot example dot main because once again it's capitalized. So now what we do is we would go to project structure. Now this is how you make it into an actual jar file. Click artifacts, the green plus sign, jar, and then click empty. And then just type the name of your plugin, mine for instance is example. And now over here on the available element side, you wanted to compile output your, your actual code. So example compile output, right click it, put into output root, and then apply and okay. Now we're set up to 
make this into an actual jar file. Um, so what you want to do is you want to come up here and click build, build artifacts, and then build again. And then this should build and create an out folder up here. Okay, so artifacts, example.jar. Once again, we know, like, we know this will work 100%. There's no reason to even test it. It will work. So what we have to do now is we have to open git bash. So git bash is a program basically that I guess you could say communicates with GitHub and helps you make your source code either open or private if you have a dev team. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go into my actual project folder. Let me drag this over here. And then we'll right click inside the project folder just like this. And not in, not in the source file, in, in the actual project folder. Um, right click it and open git bash here. Wait for the git bash to actually start up. And then what we'll do is we will run git init, short for initiate. Um, so now what this means is initialized empty git repository in C drive user sacer desktop example slash dot git. What this does is it creates a local repository that's only on your computer. It's, there, it's nowhere right now, but it's still created a git repository. So what you want to do is to make sure you create it to get status, even though this says master here, you never know. Um, you want to you want to type git status, and now you can see you're on branch master, which is the master, the the head honcho of all the source code in your in your one git repository. No commits yet. A commit is short for a save before you update the code. Um, so I'll, I'll explain that to you in just one moment. So untracked files, you don't have to do any of this. So what we'll do is we want to get rid of this dot idea and this out directory. So people don't see like your jar files or your, I don't know, if you want to keep your, your path directory, like private and stuff like that, we'll, we'll do that for you. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go back into our project, right click the project not in the source code on the actual project and click um new and then go to file and then type dot git ignore and then okay uh you can push yes on that it you can add it manually later it's it's up to you so the files we wanted to remove are dot idea and out okay so that's literally it for that now if we go back into git bash and we type get status it modified it also it also notifies us that we made a new file called get ignore and we modified it to get ignore or or we modified the dot get ignore so now out an idea will not be put in to our repository when we push our code or commit our code so what we'll do now is we'll do git um add and dash dash all because it's going to add everything except for what's in the git ignore and then you'll push enter and then wait for that to be done and it, you can see there's not much to there's not much to add so it does it pretty much instantly um and then we'll do git commit aka save dash m which means message quotation this is my first commit it can be anything you want there has to be two quotation marks in between the in between the message dash m means message if you don't have dash m there like if i just did this if i just did git commit it would pop up like a like a whole big like gui thing i recommend you guys just use git commit dash m this is like like whatever you want the message to be and then push enter and it's going to it's going to generate it's going to generate the the actual or it's going to save the files i guess you can say so right now it's everything everything we have right now is saved so now what we want to do is we want to we get we want to make an actual project on github so what we'll do is we'll go to github.com new repository and then we'll do example and then i don't know we can do oh look this is my example um you don't need to worry about anything else on here. You can add all of this later. We already have our git ignore, so that's fine. Um, you can just click create repository and then copy this link right here. And then go down to 
go back to get bash and type git remote add origin and then shift insert if you copy the link and then it'll what it does is it connects your your actual github repo this one right here not your local one this one right here to to the one that to the to this link basically like to your intellij and your project and all that stuff so now that you've already done this you don't need to do this any you don't need to run this command anymore unless you want to connect to another repo with the same code so what you can do now is do git push aka throw your source code into the github repo dash u origin master and then push enter and then what it does is, is it pushes everything inside your project into github so if we refresh our page now my code's in there all right so from this point forward anytime you anytime you push your code you do not need to add the dash u origin master you can literally just use git push remember to git commit dash m quotation mark message quotation mark before you get push because if you don't get if you don't commit it before you push it it's going to push old code it's 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 going to push old code that you don't that you don't want it's not going to push your updated code um so with that being said i think that's I think I pretty much covered everything in that. So, uh, get bash, get initiate, and yeah, it looks like everything everything set up good. Um, next video I'll be doing I'll be talking about webhooks and how to webhook into Discord. Um, so you can see like, or so I mean, if you're in a Discord, people can see like when you update your code or something. So, that's pretty much it. All right.